Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of Yes and Ask Me, a show where I get to interview uh, some of the brightest, smartest, most interesting minds in not just the San Antonio improv community, but Texas and the country at large. Um, today, we're continuing with our diversity week. And today's episode is about the Black experience in improv. Um, and I have a fantastic panelist for you today. Uh, my first, though, I want to uh, bring out Tina Jackson. Tina, would you please join us? Hey, Rick. Tina, uh, you are my right hand, Tina. You are my middle square. Thank you for being on this show. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, here he comes. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, wonderful. Oh, surprise guests, everyone. Uh, skip my intro. We're going straight. I'll just uh, invite him into the meeting. <laughs> Uh -huh, <laughs> he'll yep, pop great. in and then you'll see him. All right, are you ready for this? Here comes yeah. Cindy Courtney. <laughs> uh, yes, I've got 20 years of improv experience. I run Bear Stage and uh, I do this show with you all the time. What's up, Courtney? What's up, Courtney? Hey, what's up, what's up, man? How y'all doing? <laughs> doing good, good doing see, good. Man. <laughs> I had to get, get a, a set up on the fly here, so. Thanks for joining yeah. us. We just went live, so you're on. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us last minute. We had a technical difficulty with uh, our one of our other panelists, and so uh, uh, Salih Mutalib was not able to join us today. So uh, thanks for filling in last minute. We appreciate that. We really do, Simply Courtney. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Rick. Invite our other panelists to join us. All right. Devin Coleman, would you please join us? I am. I was, hey, uh, hey. Guys, all right, now uh, let me get some intros though. Okay, so Simply yeah. Courtney, uh, could you please give us some background uh, about your your comedy improv performance experience? My son's gonna look, he wants to see what's going on. Come look, sure. just watch it for the floor right here. You can look, come sit down next to me if you want. Okay, all right, what was your, you're saying what now? <laughs> just a little bit of background on your improv experience. Uh, improv is, oh, how long? Okay, so I perform with um, the group Sugar Water Purple. Uh, Let's see. I've been on improv. I've been on stand-up comedy and improv for the last seven years of my life here in uh, Austin, Texas. Um, primarily more based on the stand-up side of things and storytelling. But um, probably the last three years or so, uh, it's picked up with me doing probably, let's go 40, 60, 60% stand-up and uh, storytelling. So I'm yeah. here in Austin, Texas. Um, me and Devin both are in the group, uh, Sugar Water Purple. I don't want to do too much of his intro, but yeah, man, uh, home base is Austin. I don't know what else y'all want me to say. Uh, no, that's I'm, perfect. Like, no, that's perfect. Together. You got it. That nailed it. Thank you so much, Simply Courtney. Uh, Devin, uh, can you give us a little bit of insight into your uh, improv uh, background experience? Sure. I've been doing uh, improv and sketch for 16 years. I've seen the rise and fall of many theaters. Oh, at this uh, point, we're just racking them up. Yeah, it's just we're just, we're going to build a new utopia uh, of improv utopia. I hope so. Damn. Uh, I uh, have been performing in Austin for the last four years. Uh, and then I bounced. <laughs> you mean just recently? Mm hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's about it. Um, I was thinking of while my camera was off, I was going to paint my face white. <laughs> That'd be terrible. And, then, like, uh, and say, that's right. Here I am. No, You're I'm, the the no, I'm the token on this show. I'm a, I'll be the token on <laughs> Okay. Okay. Every uh, podcast let's... has to have one white person, right? Is that like a rule? Yeah. Who, yeah. If they want to air it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, me. Gross. All right, so David, I want to start with you. Um, can you describe to us what the black experience in improv actually is? No, I mean, <laughs> for, me, it's, for me, it was like I started at UCB in the early two thousands. So, oh, no shit. Uh, it was, it was two things. Okay, it was a golden era for UCB, uh, but it was also like. A golden era for white guys in khaki shorts you know it was that's pretty much who you saw at UCB like there was it was to the point where it was like not that many women of any uh nationality uh 
Like I only knew there were like two other black dudes at UCB when I was, and one of them was Donald Glover. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so it was rough, you know. This was the era. I mean, this still happens sometimes, but this was the era of you walk out and a white dude endows you as their drug dealer or a pimp Shit. or you know some their knowledge of black people like you got to see a white men's knowledge of black people well, i was and gonna that say was that it. used to happen to me as a woman your, like your mom, doing right? the moms and girlfriends and stuff but that sounds exponentially worse and that's the thing the one or two black women you see it was worse right because oh, they yeah. were they were a hooker or they were you know loud crazy you know endowed as these things you know they didn't come out loud and crazy Mm-hmm. That was the endowment. And it was just one of those things where I, wa- I wanted to do it, right? Like, I wanted to do comedy. So, like, for me, it was, I won't say it was easier, but, like, I could push through because that's specifically what I wanted to do, right? Uh, but I saw people, I saw many people who would, many Black people who would come to these classes and you wouldn't see them two weeks in again, you know, because... It was, it was a boot camp. They didn't mean it to be, but it was, you know, like it was like this horrible, like, I don't know, not horrible, but it was a challenging experience. Well, it's a challenging environment to find your own voice in if you're always endowed as these things that yeah. like, if you can't escape the box that they put you in. You're always trying to w- work around it. Ugh. Okay. Courtney, did, did you have a similar experience when you were first doing comedy or improv? Yes and no. I mean, the cool thing for me was um, the first troupe that I ever actually performed with was an all-black improv troupe, Sugar Water Purple. And uh, it's going to be none but plugs for Sugar Water Purple, by the way. I hope y'all are ready for that. It's but, um, literally my favorite improv team, so you can plug it as much as you want. Mine, too. How crazy. <laughs> no, um, uh, and if I'm choppy real quick, um, I'm trying to work my internet situation out over here, so I mm-hmm. apologize. Uh, am I glitchy right now, or can y'all hear me and see me? No, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, so my experience, not really as bad. Um, I think I was fortunate enough that when I showed up and really started getting involved, like from the jams I was doing, a lot of those things were already kind of, um, those conversations were taking place, we'll say, where it was like, hey, don't always endow x y as this you know and so i kind of got to catch a little bit of the um the easy runnings we'll say or it wasn't like i didn't have to worry about what is this person's no point what is this person's uh out or owie as we'll say and it was okay for people to explain that and then every now and then i would come across some people that would tell you what they expected what they didn't like what they want to stay away from but I think it helped me out because I played with an all-black improv troupe that our concerns were something totally different. Um, I, I didn't, I don't know, I, I, I get it, but I think as a stand-up comic, I take a lot more shit. Oh, I don't know if we're supposed to cuss or not, but... Uh, Go for it. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. I can take a, thank you, I can take a lot more shit than the average person. And so because of that, there are a lot of things that probably would bother you guys as improvisers and... Um, Stuff that wouldn't bother me nearly as much as stand up. Uh, on the flip side, uh, just to kind of bring a different perspective, I saw, and this is, you know, when I first started, more and more guys that y'all described, the khaki sorts, bro, uh, brigade, as we'll call it, and failing in words. Um, they went up and they always wanted to use the edgy language. They wanted to use the heavy descriptors. I'm going to use the N word. Like I had one comic come up and say, hey, I have a joke, it's going to be the N-word. And I was the only N-word there. I always say, I'm the only N-word here. And you're looking at me to say, hey, you have permission to do it. You I got it. Permission, me. Grant? No. Well, here's my thing. As a comic, I say, you can do it. But it's on you to make it work for the audience. Because if the audience doesn't take it the right way, and I speak I speak for real people. If you say the wrong shit on stage and get your ass kicked, they ain't got, <laughs> you know... <laughs> uh, I mean, good luck. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be there, and if it's funny, it's just, I'm going to laugh. But if it ain't funny, and the audience don't think it's funny, ooh, baby. You know, so <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. I, I've been that guy, and I still get it every now and then when people want to hit my inbox and say, hey, I got this 
this little thing, I got this black joke. What do you think? And I'm like, once again, if this shit work on stage, good. I'm cheering for you. But if it don't work, man. Yeah, that's the that's what I call the Seinfeld rule. Uh, Seinfeld says, but was it funny? You know, like, oh, yeah. however disgusting or dirty it was, but was it funny? Um, yeah. It's just certain philosophy that some some comics have. Mm -hmm. um, so, Devin, um, after that experience 16 years ago, have things gotten better? Have they improved in the in the world of comedy? I mean, things have gotten better because for one reason, you see more black people in improv. <laughs> like that's the number one thing. You see a lot of uh, people of color, um, and you know, and white people are a lot more like they know that this isn't just their personal playground to say whatever they want because there's like actual repercussions you know the consequences like, sure like stuff will happen you know uh, i love i love what courtney said about like, like what if we what was it matter if we give you permission like <laughs> like like the audience doesn't know i gave you permission <laughs> <laughs> that's true I don't say it too. they will literally and i i sometimes think that i get invited to shows and it's literally just so they have permission to use their black joke because I can, I can sense it coming from a mile away. They'll be like, yeah, so it was, you know, me and my boy Courtney. And I'm like, oh, God, where is this Do not boy? bring me into that. No. Yeah. And then they say the joke, and then they'll, like, gesture at me. And I'm supposed to be like, you yep. know, and, and, and if it ain't funny, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you're I on your own, you. buddy. That's the yeah, thing. Don't save them. You don't want to be saved. I can't save you, baby. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I just picture a guy getting carried off with people with torches and pitchforks, and they're like, a black guy said it was okay. You know? <laughs> you got one dude's permission, and therefore, <laughs> this black. joke is fine. <laughs> like black to all parties involved. <laughs> now, uh, one of the things that just came up in the Twitch chat uh, is a comment from uh, the one of the Sugar Water Purple shows you did in San Antonio at Bear is you guys did a uh, scene break where you went to the front of the audience and you said, uh, what's your favorite Confederate general? Uh, I can, <laughs> like, I feel Ryan. like. I'm sure oh, Ryan. Yeah, that's, that. that's a oh, Ryan. It's got Ryan written all over it. Uh, so, uh, and it immediately sets this tone for the audience of like, <gasps> uh, like, like that yeah. question is just not okay to ask or answer generally, but you guys can take, Take Literally. that sort of like thing in your in the palm of your hand and say, "This is ours. We're going to use it, um, and we're going to use this uncomfortability to build our shit." Uh, and and it's one of the things I, I admire most about Sugar Water Purple is that certainly there are jokes that I can never make on stage that you guys totally can, which and we make them all. And you, you make do, you them do. all. And the thing is, I've never laughed at all about a Confederate general in my life. Uh, <laughs> and then here you are making me laugh about these things that I don't want to laugh at, but they're funny as fuck because they're in your hands and you guys play together so well. And uh, San Antonio loves Sugar Water Purple. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, I think, I think uh, Courtney, would you agree? Like, I feel like a movie star whenever we do a show in San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes. yes you have yes, so yes, many yes, fans. Yes. But it it came because I saw you guys play uh, at Out of Bounds in Austin. Uh, it was a show at the, well, the Fallout now. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw you guys do a show at Out of Bounds when you were opening for Shakespeare. Uh, which was oh, yeah. what I, which is what I was there to see. I'd never heard of Sugar or Purple, and I saw the show, and I was like, "Fuck, I gotta get them at Bear." Um, and I dorkily introduced myself to Kenna after the show, and I was like, "Hello, I'd like your email address." <laughs> um, uh, but it was, it, you know, it's a show that is so different than anything else I see, and it's one of the things that makes me realize how important it is to have different voices on stage because there's never mm -hmm. a show like Sugar Water Purple without you guys. Like this doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and the reason it stands out so much is because people aren't saying this shit and, and you guys take the liberties to do all of it. But where do you find, um, I don't know. I mean, like just the balls to do something like that and just <laughs> like go out, like, I mean, seriously. <laughs> 
it's just some of the stuff you do is so bold and I admire it so much and I'm not asking to do it. I'm not asking for your permission <laughs> to make Confederate general jokes. Um, but it's, you know, does that come from a place of like, I don't know, just the comfortability of being able to do it with each other? Well, I think for me personally, uh, a lot of the comfort is being on stage with other black people. Like that's like, I've done shows, Courtney's done shows with people, uh, with white people, to put it plainly. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, I'm not gonna speak for Courtney on this, but for me, uh, I got all these different wheels are turning that like affects the actual improv because I'm up there, if I'm with, especially an all white cast, if I'm, I'm up there thinking about like, what's going to how what's going to come across as aggressive to them you know what's going to be uh this thing and i love you know i love to i love to put them on the spotlight like i love to do you know ryan is ryan is the same way ryan's worse than me ryan will every single time endow a white person as a kkk member every single show that we have a white guest that is like that's a, you know that ryan likes you if he endows you as a kkk member uh but yeah, like that's it for, it for me is like, I feel like our comfort uh, sort of wafts out into the audience and the audience knows they're in good hands mm -hmm. because when we say something like, who's your favorite Confederate general? Uh, it's, usually one, it's usually one person who starts it and the rest of us are laughing at that. And if yep. we're laughing, the audience knows it's okay for them to laugh. Like it's not <laughs> yeah, like- There's sort of a permission somehow. Yeah, it's not like we go out there and with a microphone and a camera and goes, who's your, who's your favorite Confederate general? Tell me right now, <laughs> you know? That would be and my so, yeah, I favorite <laughs> moment of my whole life. And, and we do, like what we do, people, like you said, people don't get to see it. Like people don't, like we all have, and Courtney, let me know if you agree. We all have like a similar experience. We all have a similar like black man's experience but we all are also coming from different things yep. that we like, you know, like, you know, I may make a reference to like some comic book I read 30 years ago, or Courtney might make a reference to a song that he liked. Like, I remember, God, I don't remember the situation, but Courtney, you remember the time that I think it was a barbershop where like I was on stage and Ryan was on stage. And for some reason we turned on the radio and the rest of you started singing end of the road by boys to men. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes. It, and that's all I was and to piggyback off of what you said, Devin, the magic for Sugar Water Purple is everything that we represent on stage is black. Right. Sometimes people don't believe that black dudes know about comic books or that they can go from knowing about comic books to talk about sports to doing a DMX reference, um, to doing a DMX impression, all in the same back to making it all work and that's yep. the magic of this whole thing i don't even think a lot of black people know about improv that's my thing is yeah, when we absolutely. get black people that come to our shows there i've talked to a lot especially at um cold sounds i'll say i didn't even know this was an option i didn't know this was a thing and i've talked to a group of um i think it was college days black people we're talking for like 30 minutes after a show once and it was just me and them talking and they everything just kind of kept circling back to we didn't know this was a thing that we could do. And I was like, we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we can. You know, <laughs> you know, it was beautiful. And I tell people the reason why I love our group so much, our troop, our family, our our whatever the hell you consider sugar water purple, the idea, the thought, all of that is because all of us are black and yet I feel like we know two individuals are the same. Oh, and no. it's a gift and a curse because sometimes it's hard to get us all in the same stage or same group. I'll and say that as a booking do, agent, but yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the magic is we still make it work. I mean, we oh went to God, Dallas. Yeah. Uh, we went to uh, Dallas. Yeah, I was like, I've seen a show with like all of you on stage at Cold Town and I've seen uh, shows with four of you at Bear, uh, and and every one of them is funny in a different way. Like it's the combination yeah. of you, uh, and the energy you guys bring is so amazing. Um, one mm -hmm. of the things you uh, uh, said uh, about 
um, black people not knowing that this is a thing we can do. Um, it's right. something that I've been talking about a lot with people lately is how, how to create better diversity within our improv scenes and how to um, not just hope they walk into the building and sign up for a class, but how do we pursue these? How do we pursue people of different cultures to right. diversify our audiences, to diversify um, our student base, to diversify our performer base. And like, and that, and I get stumped sometimes thinking about it where I'm just like, I mean, I could advertise in different publications. I could, but how do I like, how do, what would you, what would you advise a theater who, no theater in particular, but it's mine, um, <laughs> to like go out into the communities and like make this a thing that is accessible to different kinds of people who are not necessarily just finding their way into average improv theaters. Your school. Your school. Schools? Yeah. Fuck yeah, that's a great idea. My favorite thing, and this is, um, and I, I tell this a lot because uh, I was a fan of Sugar Water Purple before I was ever in it. I always like to make that known to people. Although people always lumped me in and thought I was a member of the group. I was just a black dude that liked watching these guys perform. Devin just and... said the same thing in the pre-show. <laughs> oh, about me, right? Or about no, him? about him. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We ran the same thing. See? And so... I've, I've never said I liked improv. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really, I, I used to tell, I used to get on them a lot. Um, because I was always around, especially when they first started. And I was like, what y'all are doing right now, y'all need to take this to school. I'm from Austin. I worked inner city Austin all my life. And I want stuff like this to be at the camps. I want this stuff like this to be at the schools. I want kids to see that there are so many different ways of expressing. And I mean, hell, all you have to do is go perform for 15 minutes. Uh, teach kids how to do it for 30 more minutes and then have a big mass up our gym for another 15 minutes. And you have a course that you can take to school. It's minority led. Um, it's all inclusive. It can be tailored to this age group, this demographic, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I first uh, heard about it, I was like, oh, this is cool. Then I watched it. I was like, oh, you don't know what you have here. And so that's what I feel is the best way. When I say schools, Maybe. by the way, I'm not just talking about elementary. I mean, elementary, middle school, high school, college, um, all of those different groups, you can take them there. And that's where you're going to get your, um, I think your diversity is going to come from. You have Courtney. to take your uh, diverse members too, <laughs> by the way. Courtney, is, that, is, is that a responsibility? Is that a responsibility just for people of color? Is it only people of color that need to go into these schools and, and, and present the comedy, the improv, or is it something that we all have a responsibility to do? Yes and no. Yes and no. If somebody that looks like you tell or shows you something is possible, it makes it a little bit easier to stomach. Absolutely. But I think if you go to schools, uh, what unfortunately we all uh, can see, Devin, I think you work, yeah, you work in schools. What's yep. given to them is very limited, and it's no fault of the administration, et cetera. Some people can say it is, some people can say it is, some people there. Um, I think that when you put that there and you say, hey, this is a thing, a lot of us, and I'm saying us as a black man and minority member, or whatever, are going to see improv and go, oh shit, that's fun. That that looks fun. I, I like basketball, but I also like being able to just scream obscenities into the ether, you know, whatever the hell. So, I mean, you won't go cussing at a school, but right? you know. Yeah. Probably a little, yeah. If you Depending cuss on the, the level. college, they'll do it. If you cuss at the college, they'll do that shit. Go in there and tell some dick jokes to a bunch of college kids and say, we're a troop of dick joke tellers. I promise you, your stuff will explode. Yeah. Pun intended. That was a horrible stuff. They'll say, they'll say, you get paid to tell dick jokes, and we'll go, well. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we don't get paid. <laughs> but, this, this is something I've thought about a lot, too, over the years. And Courtney's absolutely right. You got to get out there in the schools and, like, because we did, there was a stool pigeon show uh, at UT for, like, high schoolers. And, like, even if you don't get a chance to, like, really bring them in, uh, like Courtney was saying, which is a great idea, but if you don't get that chance, if you just get to do a show, they still come up with, to you with so many questions yeah. about doing it and what's it like and, like, how did you get there, blah, blah, blah. But also, one thing that I've 
told many, many people who have asked, like many theater owners, my feeling is that shows are commercials for the classes. Absolutely. So, I've always said that. Absolutely. So if you have a show, there's a couple things. One, if you have a show, because I've seen this happen at theaters, uh, where like you'll have a show of all white dudes who like do a scene where they're like, oh, we're from the hood, blah, blah, blah. And they'll do this scene. And then if you're sitting in the audience looking like me or Courtney, and the guy who just did this, like, you know, quote unquote, gangster accent at the end of the show goes, hey, we teach classes. You're going to say not for me. You don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like and that's a big thing. That's something that theaters. So part of it, too, is cultural. And I mean, like yeah. the culture of comedy. Yes, like that's what I'm trying to change. That's yeah, what I want to do like so much of it is not getting like getting it when you're teaching right getting into that uncomfortable space of saying don't do this yeah and I've met plenty of teachers improv teachers who it's not even that they don't it's not that they fear conflict you know it's not that sort of thing it's that the thing is because I've done it too you know in coaching not with something like as, as egregious as that but there's stuff where you're just like I can't take up everyone else's time telling you why you're a dickhead you know like yeah. we gotta we gotta but like you have you do have to because if you, you don't to. they're gonna you gotta do call it. It out. and you gotta call it out in the moment too because yeah, if you right. let it sit it it changes in somebody's mind where it's like i didn't say it that way i didn't mean it and it's like no you said it and i heard it six minutes ago and we're yeah. gonna talk about it right now like we're gonna stop because the and, problem is and it, it's very uncomfortable as a teacher to do I, yeah. I hate doing it but it has to be done right and the and the problem is like when I when I say because for me for example I will call it out right and like people will call it out as a teacher I'm sure you've called out lots of stuff but you can also tell when I say like you want to waste everybody else's time you can tell that you when know you, when it's going to be a conversation yeah, that, and you can also tell when you say to the person, hey, maybe you shouldn't have made this move, and they say okay just to get you to stop talking to them. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I should talk to you for 45 more minutes, but I can't. Yeah, well, I want to hold you after class if, I'm, if, I, if, if it's okay. So changing that culture is part of, like, because, yeah. like, for, like, for me, the way I got to improv was I watched the Upright Citizens Brigade TV show, right, mm -hmm. in college, and then... Before I was even planning to do improv, my girlfriend at the time and I took a trip to New York and we went to their theater and we saw shows and there was nothing that like made me say, fuck this. Like, that's basically what it was. Like they said, oh, we teach classes or whatever. And I was like, I could take, take classes here. You know, once you get into the classes then you're like, <laughs> like there's people <laughs> doing stuff. The, uh, yeah. But like now we don't really have that thing that's driving people to improv. Like, mm -hmm. that UCB show, I'm sure, drove a whole generation of people to their theater, Second City, lots of places. But sure. we don't have that. Even though their show was a sketch show, their show was written, right? But, like, just the name, like, when you right. find out about the name, you're like, oh, there's a place. Drove somebody to that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like it's definitely getting out, like Courtney said, that is, like, so important to have, like, a tour co, you know, that, like, just goes out to schools goes out to all these different places but yeah like just for like if you're like thinking about like the adult off the street because I feel like to, to briefly say, <laughs> uh, I feel like there is a problem with a lot of white improvisers where it isn't that they're mean-spirited you know they're not but they do only know other white people and they yeah. do only think other white people are in the audience right you know but the That's, thing is their culture is just sitting here yeah yeah. And like, but the thing is, too, they shouldn't need to know that me or Courtney is in the audience. Like, it, like it's not our job to come and scare you straight. Like, right. like, just, <laughs> you should just no, know that behavior is bullshit, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. totally that. Uh, yeah, what's, uh, Courtney, I'll direct this next one to you. Sorry, Rick, I'm stepping on you. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many questions. Uh I was I was gonna ask like what's what's something that you want your white teammates your white um, uh, scene partners your classmates your co teachers what's something you want the white improv community to know? Ah, I just asked this with my throat. Uh, I did a, so I, we have a show um, 
called Anomaly. Shout out to Molly Kirby. And we did the Zoom equivalent. I guess it'll be the Twitch uh, equivalent of it recently. And what a lot of people know is we rehearsed for that damn one show that we did. Oh, God. Six weeks, I think. Every Thursday we rehearsed for one show. And we rehearsed and didn't know when we were going to get a show, which is so weird for me. I'm like, wait, we're doing two-hour rehearsals weekly, and we don't know if we're going to have a damn show. So the reason I brought that up is um, we have one of our games called uh, Magazine, and so you have to write a headline from a, I guess, in the, in the, uh, the voice of a specific magazine, right? So they were going through, and they were allowing – we were uh, each endowing each person with what magazine they're representing. And I guess I was just in a, a rough mood. Let's just call it a rough mood. Um, I endowed somebody with Debt Magazine or something like that. And I guess the way I put it, I could tell that the way they were going, they were coming from, well, I'm only black person in the truth. All of their magazines, newspapers, et cetera, were things that I hate to say, white people knew. And I get frustrated because when I see stuff like that, it'll be references made. And I'm just like, that's crazy how they get to just assume that everybody knows this. And I said, well, what if I flip the script? Let me do something that's pert to my community. And so I ended up one person with, a, I think, Jet Magazine, and that set off a whole conversation after the thing was over with. But I said, what y'all got a taste of is what I live daily. Everything is normal to y'all, and I have to catch up and learn about the. There's a stinking magazine, I don't remember it, but it was uh, something to do with far right wing politics or something like that. That they all knew what it was, and they were all like, Oh, and I was like, I don't even know what the hell you're saying. It's just yeah. this, this word gar or jar, 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 jargon right now, you know. So I said, I'm gonna endow one of y'all with Jet Magazine, and I could tell the person that I did it. Uh, was like going through and Googling and learning what the hell Jet Magazine was while we were doing this. Quick, what is it? Yeah, it was so fun for me though. Yeah. I just imagine I just imagine that person going, I'm a pilot. I'm in Jet Magazine. <laughs> Honestly, right? Like, I think one of the things that's true for me, and I'm not in any way speaking on behalf of all white people, but like some of that stuff I shy away from because I don't want to do it wrong, right? I don't want to do it as a service. I don't want to misrepresent it. So it's hard for me to make that choice and just like go for it because what if I'm fucking off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me stand upon that because that came up. Yeah. What's wrong? It's improv. Look, I gotta get closer. Dramatic. Do you understand how many things I messed up when I'm on stage that I don't know anything about? You people make references, and I don't mean to say you people as white people, but I'm I understand. Sorry. We're good. <laughs> Y'all don't make references. And then I have to yes and it. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just having fun looking at my nose here. Right <laughs> now, right? I think this is what it is. I, I think this is what it is. So uh, do it. And I think as long as you don't come, in my personal opinion, from a place of hate, if you're playing on stage, your scene partners and your troop mates should know that you're coming from a place of I don't know, but at the same time, you're still trying to come there. Well, that was my whole thing with that. I, I still think it was one of my favorite moments ever, though, because I made a legit decision. I said, I'm going to give y'all some black shit. And I didn't give them hard black shit. That was easy black shit. Jay yeah, Magazine was like level two. Go ahead. You, didn't, you didn't give them King Magazine. You didn't oh. give them Lowrider. I don't know what I'm talking about. Is, yeah. I just imagine you... I just imagine you in there, like, them going, Courtney, I'm going to give you Marie Claire Magazine. You know? <laughs> it's like, you got to... <laughs> You gotta know what this is, Do you, Courtney. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever feel like because this? I feel like this all the time. Do you ever feel like when you're playing with white improvisers, you're like, I get it. You like Star Wars. <laughs> I do, I do, and I and see, I that's a great yes, I do. And you know what's funny? When I have to go up and I have to do something related to Star Wars, I don't have a lot of knowledge of Star Wars. But I don't have a fear of messing up Star Wars. I have a fear of messing up the the vibe or the scene, yeah. or coming off as you know a, a jerk or a jackass or over talking. I don't have a fear of messing up. Oh my God, did I do Chewbacca's accent wrong? 
Like, I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> but, you know, you know, whatever. Tupac's back. that. Uh, but, so, and, and, okay, hold on. So, okay, Courtney, uh, yeah, I want to put, put some things together here. Courtney, come on. J- just right now you said, you know, in that example with Jet Magazine, you said, you know, what? how about if I just give this guy some black shit, right? And earlier you said that when you're in Sugar Water Purple and you're up on stage, everything you guys do is black. And Devin, you mentioned that Sugar Water Purple, you guys out there together, that's your comfort zone. You're with a bunch of other black performers. Mm-hmm. On Wednesday's show, I had, it was my Latin X show. I had uh, Latino Latinas on my show. And yeah. several of them said, no, I don't want to play my grandmother, my abuela, or my uncle, my tío, because I don't want it to come off like a caricature. So my question to you it. guys, do you get it? So uh, do, do you draw the line? Where is the line of your comfort zone? Where is the point where you say, no, I can't do that because I'm black. And I don't want them to laugh at that in the wrong way. When it's parody versus a portrayal. And so, or even a caricature in this case, but parody nonetheless. Um, bits and pieces will do. But at the same time, and I think we towed a line between that. Because Ryan could say something very crazy. But then you can have Devin that can come back and straighten us out. And I feel like from what I've observed in the past few years of being in the troop, um, and Devin, you can probably expand on this a little bit better, is whenever we go goofy and I say, like, please say black if, some smart shit comes right behind it. And I used to tell people all the time, and I don't think we consciously do it. I think we just know each other well enough, and we kind of have an idea of how we would like to be portrayed, is that whenever some, yo, yo, gangster, what's up? Some kind of, like, I'm trying not to say a white reference because it's not a white reference. <laughs> everybody, right? Well, it's for everybody. everybody. It's well, a it's reference. For everybody, even though it wasn't designed for us. But anyway, so there's always some kind of really smart reference that is um, going to pop out. And so we try our best to be funny, to be fair, to be realistic, and to not parody and not lampoon, I think is what I wanted to say. Yeah. Black culture, yeah. if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think, well, I mean, at the risk of fangirling, which I've already done, I was like, I think Sugar Water Purple toes that line so well because I, as a white person, never feel like uncomfortable in the audience. Like, I, I don't belong here or I don't understand it. Or, like, it's so intelligent, it's so topical, it's so hard hitting. Um, it's that's why it's my favorite team. You know, it's 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 a show I enjoy watching and have driven to Austin to watch, which we were talking in the pre-show about like, man, driving to Austin for a show, that's like not a thing San Antonio's doing a lot of. Um, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. You don't, uh, driving an hour and a half for a show is kind of ridiculous sometimes. But your show on a Wednesday is like, fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's- Devin, De- Devin, how do, you, how do you walk that line? How do you not lampoon black culture? So I feel like it's about juxtaposition right like it is about one a thing i think about a lot uh i'm sure the rest of us do i think about what we think is funny versus what the audience what we think is okay for the audience to laugh at because a lot of our audiences are white it's austin like Mm -hmm. they are white and sometimes we uh get a little closer to that edge when we see a lot like you know five or six black people in the audience you know like we're gonna like do the show for them and the white people can come along if they feel like it but like that's the big thing is i i sometimes consider that i consider what do i what would i not be comfortable with white people laughing at sure uh so it's so like the white, and, sort of, is it white gaze that's just like i don't want white people to see me do this well, it's like, I don't want to reaffirm some belief that oh, they have. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. You know, even though we are not playing to that belief. And that's where, I, that's where it comes in with like, when we see, at least for me, when, when I see more black people in the audience, I feel comfortable playing to something that I necessarily, wouldn't necessarily want white people to laugh at, but like, I feel like it counterbalances it <laughs> when we're doing it because we're doing yeah. stuff that, that they, I also want to do stuff that black people recognize in themselves, yeah. you know, like yeah. as part of the experience. Yeah. So, sure. so if we have an all white audience, 
this isn't their experience. This is this is us taking them to a, a, a graduate level class. Yes. You know, this is this is what we're doing. And it's like I said, like I mentioned the juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. Uh one thing we like to do that I think uh we oh, we we play upon letting white people know that we know we not only do we know our shit, we know your shit too. Because we have to, you know. Being so good. there might be yeah. there there, yeah. there might yeah. be a scene. There might be a scene where like Courtney and Kenna are playing like gangbangers, right? And I might come in and go, Whoa, yo, what y'all niggas doing? You know it's time for Gilmore girls. You know, like you just mix in that stuff. And it's like, yeah, white people, we know what you do, we know where you're at. Yep. No, I yeah. Ugh, so fun. That's my favorite thing about us. And I, I really say that um it's it's a I think I've described Sugar Water Purple as the Swiss army knife. Of truth. And it's not saying that we're better than anybody. It's not saying that. But at the same time, I feel like if you put us in just about any scenario, we're going to come out and people are going to laugh. People are going to maybe learn a little bit, but they're going to be entertained. We can do the clean show. We can go and do. I think, honestly, you could put us at a church and we'll do fine. You could take us and put us, because I use religion kind of my way of figuring out the differences between groups. You put us in an all-white church, we'll entertain them. You take us and put us at a black church, we'll entertain them. And you take us and put us at a youth church on Saturday afternoon, and we'll entertain them as well. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's, I think it is a matter of being comfortable because I've asked myself, why is it that I can't do this stuff with other, because uh, I'm studying with other shows and troops, et cetera. And I say, because I know that these guys, even if they don't know me personally, I can make, there's some references that I can make that I can't think of right now off the top of my head. But I know that when I get on stage, I make that reference. Yeah. I have six other people that probably got something for it, you know? Yeah. Or at least so, one. <laughs> at least somebody's going to get in there. Somebody, yeah. one out of six, man. And I've seen it before where there's the magic that, you know, somebody goes out and does something. And we all jump in and it's like a choir. I don't know if y'all have ever been around black people that just randomly start singing together. If you have never done that, do yourself a favor and just hang out with us and just watch. Don't say anything. Don't try to join in. No disrespect. I don't know if y'all can sing or not, but do your thing. Just watch. And we'll just snatch and actually know it's and it's not parody. It's just that's, that's what's in our DNA. And there's a little bit of that, I think, that happens with Sugar Water Purple when we're on stage. We may not literally, like, we might not literally sing, but when we're up there, it's, um, man, there's just, there's something divine that takes place every time we perform together. Whether it's three of us, um, or it's all seven of us on stage together, uh, there's something that happens that, I don't even think you can really describe it. I'm I'm doing it a, a huge disservice of trying to describe it, but I know it's there. It's no, well, it's off, good, yeah. off the if, like air. Mm -hmm. if, if you've never been around black people who start singing together, also known as all black people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to them. Talk to them, them. <laughs> Oh, oh, folks, that's actually uh, the end of our show. And I want, I'm so glad that Courtney, you said that the, what you were describing, I don't, you didn't use the word, but what, what I was hearing you say is magic. When, when you guys and Sugar Water Purple get together, it's, it's magic. It's amazing. Uh, and I've seen you guys perform and I know it firsthand. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you all for being on the show. Simply Courtney, thank you for jumping in. Uh, uh, you're a lifesaver. Uh, yes. Devin, <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Thank you for the discussion. This has well, been fantastic. Well, get on the camera and say hi before I can jack you up. <laughs> I will put this camera on you. Oh, this is the perfect that. ending. This is the wrap it up. This is the wrap, yeah. Uh, uh, for the record, my daughter walked in, saw the tripod stuff, and said, no, nope, and walked away. I was like, you don't want none of this? <laughs> Mm -mm. Tina, Tina, thank you for sponsoring this. Thank you for sponsoring uh, Diversity Week. I want everybody to know that it was last month that Tina came to me and said, hey, what about a show about people that are underrepresented in the improv community? How about a few of those shows? Uh, and then it was um, 
a few days later, they were chatting to Facebook because she said, there's no way we can fit everybody in like a one week. We have to have these diversity shows more often that to show people that don't get that opportunity. Um, so Tina, this is a fantastic idea. These are fantastic shows. Uh, we're not done I'm with so them either. Happy. Oh no, no, we're gonna have them. plenty more. Exactly. Uh, thank you for all the Twitch, uh, the Twitch users, the, the Twitch yes, viewers uh, watching us live. This has been great information. Thank you all so much. I want um, Devin to plug his show uh, oh, right yes, after this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dev, I, know Devin, still, right now. I know you still have a spiel, but I, Devin's got a show right after this and I wanna make sure everybody's watching it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, say it right now, Devin, go ahead. Yeah, uh, on Cold Town TV on Twitch, I have a show called Hey, How Are You? Uh, it's an interview show. I will be talking to Ryan Darbaugh and we have mentioned a lot. Talking uh, about him a lot now. Uh, uh, black, yo. Yep, uh, Courtney, you gotta come do it by the way, sometime. What what time? Uh, is, it, is it in the next 10 minutes or, or an hour? When? It's at 8, sorry. It's 8 p.m. Central. 8 p.m. Uh, Central, okay, great. 8 p.m. Central, so you get an hour, stretch your legs, go pee. And that's Coltown Theater? Coltown TV? Is that Coltown TV. Coltown, Coltown TV on Twitch. On Twitch. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Devin. That sounds exciting. Um, again, guys. Um, oh, and Tina, did you, did you post the um, the um, yeah, oh, I'll post uh, place the where we can... Great. We're going to have a couple of links for places where you can... Um, where you can uh, donate to Black Lives Matters if you choose to. Uh, and I also wanna say that this is an improv show and we all here, we, most of us love improv. And if um, you like what you say, if you like what you saw today uh, and you're not in the San Antonio area, look up online, look up your local improv theater. They probably aren't open at the moment. Um, go to their website, see when they will open and maybe even just hit a donate button there. If you are in San Antonio uh, and you've been to Bear Stage, if you like Bear Stage, if you like what you saw today, go to bearstage.com and there is a link on that front page uh, where you can donate and help out Bear Stage in this weird, weird, crazy time. Again, I wanna thank my panelists, Twitch, everybody. Y'all have been fantastic. Um, thank you all so much and I'll see Happy you on June Monday. Happy Juneteenth, y'all. Go celebrate. Venmo us. Venmo. <laughs>